Hey there, welcome back to Magic String Works. So today on the workbench, we have this alligator or snakeskin case. And I made a short video the other day about that. And what do we have inside? We have this. 1947 Martin triple zero eighteen or triple aught eighteen. Really nice. Nineteen forty seven. Wow. There we go. So the owners brought it here for string change, mainly. And just to you know have a look at it, make sure everything's okay. So let's uh, get out of the case and uh, have a good look at this old beauty. Oh, I forgot. Just before we take it out of the case, let's have a peek inside. Just a look. There's no handle there. Whoop, what have we got there? Oh, these are the original tuners. Okay, that's cool. These are the elixir strings we're going to put on it. Alright, now we can get it out. Okay, well here it is, in a little closer detail. So, Martin and Company, established 1833. And we have a mahogany neck with a rosewood fingerboard. Just some dot inlays. And we have a spruce top. So, this could be Adirondack spruce or it's just Sitka spruce. There was sort of a change between 1946 and 1947, apparently. I think, yeah, this is the original pick guard here. You can feel it's wavy. But have a look. I hope it shows up on the camera. Some sort of ghosting going on here. See that? So I wonder if someone had an aftermarket pickup or put some a different pick up there. A uh, pick guard, sorry. I don't know. Some finish coming up, so kind of tells me that maybe somebody had even like mylar they put down there to protect the top. Here's the bridge. Wow, look at that saddle. <laughs> there is nothing there. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> we'll have a look inside. The serial number is on the he right here under the neck block. But you can see some cleats, right? There's a cleat there, there's a cleat back there, and I think there's a few more running down the guitar. So someone's been in here to repair a crack. There's a Martin stamp in there, Nazareth. Nazareth, Pennsylvania. So, hmm. This guitar has seen a little bit of work over the years, I'm sure. Oh! <laughs> We're missing the end pin here. You can see right through the guitar, look at that. Well, I have in this bag the original tuners. Let's see if, there we go. Ooh, two of them. Two end pins. Let's flip this guitar over for a second. Yeah, nice mahogany back. This might have had a respray. Oh, a little bit of damage here in the binding. I can feel oh, minute cracks. Some of those cleats are to repair that. Yeah, it does look like it's had maybe a respray at some point. Tighten that up. Mahogany neck. Now these are not original tuners, right? We just saw the original ones in the bag. So somebody's uh, put these Ibanez tuners on. <laughs> That's interesting. Interesting choice. Probably what they had laying around. So we're going to put uh, 11 to 52 custom lights from Elixir. It's a good choice. Lighter gauge is better on these vintage guitars. You really don't want to put something heavy on here, like 12, you know, would be the maximum, of course. But 13s, no. 11s are good. A 
I'll measure these and see what they are. I want to measure the uh, fret height too. They're really down there. So these have been dressed, I'm sure, a couple of times. Yeah, there's not much fret left there. And they're really square too. Almost like a classical guitar. All right, let's uh, take some measurements. So I'm not here to do anything to this guitar other than a string change and maybe clean it up a little bit. So let's check the action here at the 12 frets. You can tell it's pretty high. So let's start with 664s using the string gauges. Yeah, it's definitely higher. Yeah, so you know we're higher than 664s on all the strings at the 12th fret. Now, you know, this is an old guitar, and you probably would need a neck reset to alleviate that. Let's check the action down at the first fret. So we like to see about 18 thousandths for a guitar. Eh, look at that. That's pretty good. I thought it was gonna be lower than that. I mean, it's definitely touching. I'll lift it up. Yeah, that's that's surprisingly good. I was sure it was going to be really just scraping along. And maybe the B string, yeah, and that nut is really low. If I push down on the third, yeah, the string's basically touching the first fret. Yeah, not much going on there. So, you know, we're we're down to uh, a nut that probably needs to be changed. We probably, you know, at some point had a refret, but, you know, you can't do any of that if you don't reset the neck angle. And we can talk about that a little more in detail. Just wanted to, sh just wanted to show you that. Look at that. These strings are like right into that nut. I don't know if it's original, but uh, it's been on there a while, I'm sure. That B string is almost on the fretboard. But, you know, in the open position here, the open plane, I'm not hearing any buzzing at all. So I'm curious to see how tall these frets are. Like I say, they wouldn't have been super tall in the first place back then, but I'm going to do it in thousandths of an inch first. Um, I suspect they're probably around 30. Ooh, maybe not. 18, well, 18.5 thousandths, 20 thousandths, 18 thousandths. You can see it on the camera, sometimes it's hard to see. So that's super low. I mean, when you start getting below 30 thousandths, that's when you start thinking about a fret job. <laughs> 20 thousandths, yeah. 29 as we move up a bit. 23. Yeah, so I mean, these frets are, you know, at the end of their life, basically. So this would be something the owner would have to think about. Wow, really nice rolled edges. Really soft, comfortable. Hmm. Yeah, the owner would have to think about changing those frets. I mean, this is a vintage guitar. I don't know what the worth of it is, you know, the value, but. Um, you know, it's something to think about. So I just want to check here with the string action ruler now, just the height of the 12th fret the string action. I mean, wow, yeah, we're, we're around 864. Pretty consistent, a little under 7 maybe, 8, 8, 9, 9. Yeah, so, you know, we're about 864 pretty much across all six strings. So because the saddle has nowhere to go, right? So we looked at that saddle here. This has, there's no saddle left, basically. Um, that means you'd have to do a neck reset. So that's changing the angle of the neck here. So you'd have to remove the neck from the body and then send the heel of the neck so you can tilt the neck backwards, so this way, right? 
So that would lift the neck up and give us um, some angle now that we can raise, put a new saddle in, put a new saddle that would make this higher. The neck angle would come up and then you can fiddle around with it, right? So if you want to see a master at work doing that, watch Ted Woodford. Uh, he's from Hamilton, Ontario, and he does an amazing job. He has great YouTube videos. Um, I think he's probably got like a six month waiting list. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that, that's more work than I do here. You know, I have to set up and I'll you know, do some fret work. But uh, neck reset, especially on a vintage guitar like that, no, you need a, a specialist. And a guy like Ted Woodford, he's the guy I would call. So I'm not really sure why there isn't an end pin in there. There's two in here. So I'll take these out. There's one, here's the other one. One's a little bigger, I can see, than the other. Diameter, so, <laughs> let's see. If I take this one, whoa, that's too small. Will this one be just right? <laughs> yeah, they're both, they're both just a little too small in diameter. Um. You know, there's an easy fix, I guess, a little bit of tape, and then you put it in there, and there you go, right, and you can pull it out easy enough. These are always meant to be a pressure fit anyways, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, definitely I'll recommend to the owner that he can just put, you know, one layer of tape, maybe two, and that'll probably do the trick and hold it in place enough to use, so we'll put these back in the bag. I did want to check the gauge of these strings because they, they really do feel thick. So I'll get the calipers out. 56 thousandths. 12 and a half. 13, it's probably 13. Let's try the A string. 45. So these strings, they go 11 to 52, right? So the A string on uh, these elixirs, these, so this is 45 on here, and they're 42. So they're probably 12s, 12 to 55, 12 to 56. Yeah, 12 to 56. So we're going to lighten up the gauge a little bit. Go with these, 11 to 52s, like I said earlier. That's good for a vintage guitar. Takes a little tension off so we don't have as much bellying going on. You know, bridge wants to pop forward like that. Alright, let me get the strings off. Hey look. Hey look at that big old dust bunny. <laughs> there is no truss rod here or there. So, you know, that's one of the problems with these. <laughs> you can't adjust the neck at all for neck relief. I didn't check that, but uh, you know what? Before I take the strings off, I will check the neck relief. Just for funsies. So an acoustic guitar, it's, you know, somewhere around eight thousandths is nice. And again, I'll check capo on the first, push down, somewhere on the body joint. And yeah, that's actually kind of nice. <laughs> just barely touching. So I think the neck relief is pretty good. It's just the action's really high, and that has to do with the angle, you know, of the neck and, you know, bellying in this guitar. So not much we can do about that. So like any guitar, you know, you don't go crazy taking strings off. And I, I like to... Um, you know, definitely what I like to do, especially with acoustics, is just, you know, do one string at a time. And uh, these tuners are not very good. <laughs> these Ibanez. They're old, too. So this repair work on this guitar was probably done sometime in the 80s, early 90s, I would think. But... Uh, yeah, everything seems pretty good on here. 
So I think I'll do one string at a time. I got some sort of lacquer or something right there. Yeah, do one string at a time and then that way, you know, because I can't really do any adjustments, uh, that way it'll sort of keep its shape, <laughs> hopefully. And sometimes these bridge pins just pop out, sometimes they don't. What you need to do is push down a little bit, and I've got this little tool that came with something, I don't even remember what it was, a gift with purchase. And look, it just levers it up, and I'm going to pop it out. There we go. Well, these are beat up. Again, I don't know if these are original, but uh, yeah, it's pretty beat up. I'll leave it right there. Okay, so elixir. I mean, these are nice strings. They last a long time. They're coated. Uh, they're not inexpensive. So if you're someone who likes to change your strings every uh, few weeks, two, three weeks, uh, you better put that in the budget. But they are nice. Oh. Oh, this guitar does make noise. That's good. Okay, so. I do like to bend down the string a little bit like that. And these are already pretty chamfered at the bottom, which means we should be able to replicate what we saw earlier in there. There we go. That's fitting nice. Bring that up to the other end. So I'm sure you've heard me say this before. You know, I don't believe there's any magic to stringing up here. You don't need luthier's knots or locking, you know, some sort of locking way of wrapping them around the post. So generally what I'll do is, um, you know, sometimes you have to do it a couple of times. Not sure of the length, but I'll go one and a half tuners past, line up the tuning post hole with the nut. There we go. And I'll just pull this one back and bend it around a little bit, give it a little start. I will clip this off it, a little bit because it's pretty long. Let's get this thing. There we go. Oh, that went flying. And then we'll just wind it up. Now you just have to make sure your string goes underneath the tail that's coming out of the post. I'm going to pull that through as well. You want two or three windings here for the uh, six string. You know, two is probably enough. Three isn't bad either. And if you take a pair of pliers, usually I can get in here. I'll just squeeze that through. There we go. Perfect. Get a, little, get a little tension on it. Doesn't have to be up to pitch right away, of course. Okay, we'll leave that like that. Now I'm breaking out the power tools. Just as I was taking that uh, A string out, I noticed a crack. Can see the crack. I hope you can see. Goes right through all the string holes, right? Bridge pin holes. Yeah, that's pretty common over time. But uh, yeah. So I mean, if it doesn't get any bigger, you know, it doesn't affect anything. You just leave it. You could fill it with glue at some point. It might have already been filled with glue. It looks like a little bit of residue there, but. Again, this is just a string change here, so I'll let the owner know. So I'm also noticing that these uh, tuning washers... Why do I keep saying washers? Nuts. <laughs> They're loose, so as I take them off here, I'm going to tighten them up. Let's see if this one... Yeah, this one was loose too. So we'll get that one now too. So this is a 3 8 Will 10 work? Yeah. Oh, no. 3 8s. have to be crazy tight, but you know, just get them nice and snug. And by the way, uh, nobody says you can't turn the guitar around on your workbench. 
so you can work on the first, second, and third strings a lot easier than having to reach over and stuff, right? <laughs> so just turn it around. So these aren't the, uh, the original tuners, of course, but if you look at these Ibanez tuners, they've got some sort of, it's almost like a locking mechanism here, tightening. So I think you could really tighten these down if you wanted to and lock it in place, but I'm going to loosen it a little bit. Again with a 3 8 wrench, tighten up. That nut. Loosen that a little bit. I see, I like, gotta tighten that down a bit. I guess you could take some pliers and really tighten that down if you wanted. <laughs> I don't know that I want to do that. Well, we're gonna tune this guitar up. Put my strobo tuner on here. <laughs> Sounds flat. You can hear that, eh? So the string is settling. So I haven't stretched them yet. So you really need the string to settle into two places, like right here, the bridge pins, and also also up at the tuning post. E. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to stretch this string up. Again, that pulls it up at the nut, seats it in the tuning post down here. The Give that a good pull. Yeah, let's come back. Let's see what we got out of there. <laughs> G sharp. So that's not the string stretching so much as it just, you know, wasn't seated in the tuning post, that kind of thing. So I'm going to do them all, get this thing in tune so it sounds good. Okay, I've stretched the strings three or four times, you know, the wound strings, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth on an acoustic. They need to be stretched more than the plain strings. Sounded pretty good though. That's a 77 year old guitar. So when you want to come back and clean these frets after you've already strung it up, you can use these. These are, I can't remember the name of them to be honest, they're brass with a little rubber sheathing. And you put on, it holds the strings away. I've just put one on here because I'm really not going to town with these, but I'm going to use a 400 and then a thousand, um, a little cleaner one, thousand fret eraser here. I'm just going to go over these frets lightly. They really are grungy, so <laughs> this will do. Will help a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's better. They're so low, these frets. Oh my god! All right, I'll finish this up. String it back to tension. So another thing I noticed with this guitar, when you want to play it, it's really neck heavy, like headstock heavy, because of these tuners. Like they're very heavy, big tuners, so I'd recommend to the owner to find some vintage, you know, tuners that match what was on here originally. They're gonna be a lot lighter than these things. They'll look better too. So, yeah, it's amazing. It's hard to demonstrate, but oh. <laughs> this guitar just wants to go down like that. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do to this guitar. Just uh, really just wanted to do a string change, check it out. Found a couple of issues, but uh, yeah, 1947 Martin, 77 year old guitar, triple zero eighteen is the model, or triple lot eighteen. It's in pretty good shape. Want to hear it? Let's listen to it.
Pretty nice. I think it's you know suited for cowboy chords now. That action's really high unless you get a reset done. Uh, change the saddle, so the neck angle, get the saddle, and maybe do the frets too, but hey, that might be this owner, might be the next one. So I would recommend detuning a vintage guitar too, so you put light strings, which is nice, detune it down a half step, and that'll keep uh, the belly down where it should be. Not like mine. <laughs> Alright, take care, thanks for watching, bye for now.